Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's not a myth, by the way. That's not a myth, brother. That's some real Orlando. That's some. That's nigga. You are old, bro. But bro, he's, he's super cool. Though. Like, if you ever meet him, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Are we on camera yet? It doesn't mean he's not respectful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. A respectful killer. And that, so that goes to say, like, I'm not gonna put niggas' business out there. George Foreman. Put on May 31st, <laughs> 1992. No, um. These niggas are, that's how all beef starts. That's how all crew starts. That's how gangs start. It's high schoolers, you know what I'm saying? Middle schoolers. They are like, you know what? We're going to team up. That way nobody can mess with us. And then they walk around beating other people up. And the next thing you know, we're going to sell these drugs. We're going to do this. Then they got beef with another crew. And then it yeah. escalates from just fighting to guns. And yeah. now you're full-fledged. Uh, you in it now. Yeah, you in the game Before now. you know it. That's yeah. how it starts. It always starts with something. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Relatively safe. That's why I say you can't let black people congregate to get together. You know what I'm saying? You got to stop them and frisk them. You know what I'm saying? Because you never know when it's a gang. You right. know what I mean? Drake tried to tell us. <laughs> Who are we here with? Like, introduce your... Listen, it's the incredible... It's the incredible Ock, baby. I don't have a name for this podcast, but it seems like we're going with Ock Samson Speaks. And I'm here with a good brother of mine. By the name of Brandon. Brandon's designed everything he's wearing right now, including the socks and the polo shirt. The hat and the sneakers are for sale. Word. Brandon. Holla at me, Nike. <laughs> What's good, man? Tell How you him, been? Man, another day. Okay. Busy guy. What do you do on a day to day basis? Design and work. Do you find any time to listen to Drake and Kendrick songs? In the of course. Of I'm glad you of said course. that. Of course. Because guess what I'm we're hip-hop at about? my core. Oh. For sure. I remember I, now, that's funny. Because I remember I used to describe myself as hip-hop. Uh-huh. And now I'm a little embarrassed, too. Because of what hip-hop has become. But it's oh, you're a little younger than me. I think we were just uh -huh. discussing this just now a little early. How old are you, sir? 30. 30. I'm 30. How old am I? 37. It just turned 37. Carry so one. Yeah. You, yeah. It feels sure. just like 36. Um... I think there's a bit of a, even though we're kind of in the same time frame. We're still millennials. Yeah. It's still a little bit different for your end of things and my end of things. Uh -huh. Like to you, you're I'm right around. To the Generation around. Z, I guess. Yeah. So I got a closer little to more Z, of that. Yeah. yeah. And you'll ride around listening in the future like, you know, like it's all good. That's I the can't. guy. I can't. I, I hear that. It has to be in the club and somebody dancing or I got to skip to the next song type thing. You're not a future fan? Not the biggest Future fan. Here's the thing. I recognize Future makes music that is worth listening to. Mm -hmm. I'm just not going to be listening to it in certain settings. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like the type of person who listens to Future in every setting is either a, you know, a techno fan, like just someone who likes to dance all the time. You know what I'm saying? Or someone who's high all the time. Or Why are you Gen attributed Z? to techno? Where do you hear the techno? Techno people like to dance a lot. They like to move a lot. Uh -huh. And I think that's what Future's music is. A lot of moving. I feel like he does the opposite. You feel like he wants to slow you down? Yeah. Well, I mean, he's probably doing both. Maybe that's why he's so uh, dynamic. Dynamic, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You ever take a drug to make you want to get up and sit down at the same time? <laughs> I ain't know you like to get wet, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, I ain't know you like to walk on water, buddy. That's crazy. Buddy. But yeah, nah, like, so Future... And here's what I'm saying, right? And I've said this before. Uh -huh. I feel like the Gen Z generation is more so towards how things were in 1970s, 1960s. They do they do what they do more so based on how the drugs make them feel, how the music makes them feel. Whereas like people from my generation, based on like we want to know exactly what you're talking about and what you're saying, mm -hmm. and they don't really care that much. They mm -hmm. just want to. It's wavy, it's lit, you know what I'm saying? Your generation of uh, millennials are off the tail end of the Panther movement, yeah. the civil rights. Talk that. So it's a lot of that literature. Say that. That you that you guys are yeah. attached to. Not me. We uh we were babies in the nineties. Uh huh. But that the gravitational pool was the dance and it was a lot of people like the clown, but it's the vanilla ices of the world. It's the Yeah. Um What's my guy's name? Soldier Boy. <laughs> MC Hammer. Soldier Boy, MC Hammer. Yeah. I'm, I'm working my way up there for Got sure. You. But you know, uh, we was a part of that dance wave. I remember the two-step, 
Yeah. That was that was Atlanta. DJ Unk with the walk it out. Right. Soldier Boy came. We had fifty million crank that. That was the vibe. We were coming off the nineties. Yeah. And so it, so that was That's right when I was in high school. Mm-hmm. And so you was off that. You it was wasn't cool to like, you. Yeah, I was I mean college. I mean to say college. I yeah. was off in the college. So Yeah, you was off that. Yeah. By the time uh-huh. Laffy I remember I first heard Laffy Taffy, I thought it was a, I thought Where it was a, a joke song. I thought the radio literally you thought made it was it up. a parody? Yeah, I thought it was a parody song. Nah. I don't know if you guys remember me from the last podcast, but I, I'm, I'm the one who told you that Paul actually prefers Taylor Swift music to uh, anything. Really? Yeah, that's why you he also Swiftie? loves Laffy Taffy. You a Swifty? Uh, I'm absolutely not, but for the sake of Vox joke, sure, why not? I think that she is, uh, she... She's fighting for our rights. The best football yeah, player yeah, in yeah. the league. Oh, yeah, musically. She actually is yeah. doing her thing. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And she, uh, I'm gonna let you finish. She's good for I'm gonna let you finish. But Beyonce actually fought for our rights the best. Uh, oh, yeah? How yeah. did she do that? Uh, making a country album? Yeah. That and that our, our right to uh, drink lemonade. She's bringing our roots back. All of that. Yeah. You think she's coming out with the rock album or you she, 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 where do you think she's going? I absolutely don't care. And this is what, uh, <laughs> this is the point that I, this is the point that I'm trying to make. When I was young, people had a, a certain like time period. Where they were on top, uh-huh. and then they moved out the way as they fell off. Beyonce never goes anywhere because she's just going to constantly get a hundred people to write her songs. Drake never goes anywhere because he's constantly going to get a hundred people to write their songs. I would There's, like to put a caveat on plus that. Plus him, that Beyonce is different from Drake in that she's not on social media. I feel as much as Drake is. Drake is like constantly in the news cycle. Beyonce does, even though she drops albums, she goes away for a certain. Period. I mean, as if you go and look at the top artists, Beyonce has been a top artist for what the past fifteen years. Yeah, I'm not years? talking about her being a top artist. So, I'm but, talking what, about her just like you. You're not going to hear something from her for a second. So but what I'm trying to say is, oh, you're right. That's the difference, and that's another difference. The generational gap difference. Yeah, there wasn't no social media when I was young, so the artists remained superstars and superheroes. Mm-hmm. Now they're just regular people. We know too much about them. I, I think that's a positive thing. It's a thing. good thing and a bad thing. Uh-huh. Because some things I don't want to know. I don't I don't need to know some things. I don't need, you know, some things I don't need to be privy to. I don't want to know how the what's the dude's name? I got two phones. You know what I mean? I don't need to know if he's licking people's <laughs> toes. Okay, Gates. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to hear anything he's up to. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But all the shit he's been through, having Gates as a last name is kind of crazy. Mm, explain. I feel like he's open to everything. Mm, I had I ain't connected. You know what I'm yeah, saying? That's, that's why what. I brought you on because you're deep. You know what I mean? Why is far beyond your years? Pause, um, sir. Who do you feel like has prevailed in the Kendrick versus Drake battle? Kendrick. Mm. And yeah. wh- why would you say that? Um, I watch a lot of people say it was because of strategy. That's a part of it. Mm. But um, if you look at it, I <clears throat> I think push ups and uh, family matters uh, were bangers, right? Agreed. Uh, what Kendrick did was wrapped four or five different ways, mm. gave you maybe like twelve different flows. Mm. It was he was just a better boxer in this fight. Mm. Drake's the hardest puncher ever. Like we talking Jack Johnson, talking Deontay Wilder, George Foreman. I don't know if I'm ready to give Drake that title, but let I me am. hear out your metaphor. I am. I am, for sure. He's the hardest puncher ever. He is. He don't know how to play defense. Okay. Oh, what them gun man was on? Um, oh, daddy ass. Nigga. <laughs> <laughs> what the? I ain't never seen that. You could have just handed him the paper, but I can't like you, you walked up like Sir. My bad. Oh, give it a demerit ass nigga. Oh, go see the principal ass nigga. You, you ain't supposed to be chewing gum in this class ass nigga. Let's go. Cause you need to pick up on the microphone. Why you had to hold it there though, my brother? Because Yo. it's part of my production. <laughs> Sir, Drake is the hardest puncher. Yeah. How do you how do you part how do you Compare that to his music output. Because he, he, it's not necessarily the output. This is just his ability to make a hit. His ability to mm. to have people gravitate to him. Just, I see. 
yeah, it's the the he got he has the ultimate power. He's not invincible, clearly, right? And I think Kendrick is. I like like we talked about. I think I think this was the George Foreman Ali fight, where I, Foreman just beat the dog shit out of fucking Frazier, and everybody thinks Ali is gonna die. Like it's <laughs> it was warfare, right? <clears throat> Ali but- mentally had a game plan. You know, he knew the one thing that to get Foreman, you know, off his feet Mm -hmm. uh, and win the fight. I think this was the exact same way. And you got to think Kendrick's been – Kendrick's cut from that cloth, bro. You know what I'm saying? I I can't believe – it. still to this day it baffles me how people don't think he wasn't going to respond. Like, I I get it. It, This is (laughs) – you know what I'm saying? Like, this is is the guy. You know what I mean? They used to battle rap. This I is found the, the footage the other day, you know. Yeah, like he he was plotting on this guy for years, bro. The thing was, you gave him time. Yeah. You gave him time, and I found out that you know uh, Drake had maybe a different flow on the hard part six, but by that time it was over with. Mm. You got hit in the body so hard, you you still you can't really walk. Had you know what I'm saying? Knee. Yeah. Went yeah. out like Ryan Garcia and shit. Yeah. Versus Tink. Um, I agree to a certain extent, but I would say that Drake is less of uh, the hardest puncher and more so like Canelo. Hmm. He's picking his battles in a way that that makes him look better, even though he might be a little washed. Okay, so like he got in early. People forget this. The against Mayweather and he lost people forget this about Drake mm-hmm. when he dropped the first diss track against uh, Meek Mill nobody was feeling it charged up yeah nobody was feeling it people forget that people forget yeah. that reaction yeah then he dropped back to back and he ignored people's reaction and just dropped another song and everybody was feeling that one it worked in his favor it worked in his favor because he ended up dropping again You Drake has to be on offense there you go so then Pusha T comes and fools him, bamboozles him, right? And gets he, he drops a song, you don't even write your songs, gets Drake to drop, and then Drake comes out firing with Duppy, and he lets go of the whole clip, right? And then Pusha T drops Story of Adenon, and then Drake has to Ryan Garcia tap out, right? Uh, in hindsight, I, don't, I still don't understand why Drake doesn't respond. The same reason why they're trying to pretend he's not responding now? And so here's the point that I'm trying to make. What if, follow me, what if this nigga's really not that good at anything, right? What if the only thing he's good at is performing what other people say he is, what other people give to him? What if, what if they write one good diss song and then he doesn't have nothing else after that? He can't go, he can't keep going round after round because it's not really coming from him. It's all carefully uh, plotted on is carefully sent to this department sent to this department it's sent from OVO writer to OVO writer and then they come up with the perfect this song and if you say anything back he has to take a knee you know what I'm saying like or because you saw what happened when he responded I believe he already had um family matters ready to go yeah if you look at the first part of the song it's only it's already the last part of push up that he took mm-hmm. off Right? Because he felt like that was the strongest part. Mm-hmm. He didn't want to waste it. He wanted to wait to see what Kendrick did because he learned from the push a T battle. Don't throw out everything because they might hit you with something you don't expect. <laughs> so this idiot said, oh, he responded. Now we're going to give him three different songs on one track. And then what happened? Ten minutes later, Kendrick Lamar drops and blows his shit out the water. I think if Kendrick doesn't drop um, 616 in LA, he doesn't drop Family Matters. Yeah? Yeah. He had to play his hand, which which I give more credit to Kendrick. Yeah, he had to play his hand. Kendrick just from kept there baiting it was him. it was yeah yeah he 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 that's I guess that's the strategy there. I think he had uh bro I I don't want to give <laughs> I don't want to give Dot all the credit, but it looks like he knew how this fight was gonna go years ago. So, and here's what I'm trying to say. The reason why I give him the credit is from a battle rap standpoint, you always got to have more, 
right? You never know when they're going to say the battle's over or when they're going to say, one more round. We can't decide. One right. more round. Right. You always got to have more. Kendrick is cut from that cloth of, they call him backpackers or what have you. He always got more. You know what I'm saying? You always got to have another page of rhymes or whatever like that. So I feel like Drake grew up acting and doing whatever he did. He didn't come from that life. He seems to be a superb writer. That maybe not one seems with, to be. Yeah, I, <laughs> he's written some good stuff. Yeah, right. Great but stuff. He's also had a lot of stuff written for him. So. Nobody's nope. I've never heard a Marvin's room in my life. Oh, him complaining about um, the girl being with her new man. I don't care what he's talking about. Because you, you never heard incredible. that perspective. You never heard that perspective before, because most men look down on that perspective. And Drake was just willing to be the person in that perspective. More credit to him. Like you, you I don't know. I, when I listen to the song, I hear a nigga bitching about somebody who's with a girl now. <laughs> when y'all hear the song, I guess y'all hear like the the cinematic nature of it. And, and it's all credit, dude. Because mm-hmm. like I've listened to songs about Eminem being a serial killer or something like that, and right. I respected it. So maybe something's wrong with me. But what I'm just saying like there was a. Drake came in in a time in hip hop where Kanye West was taking over for 50 Cent and where people mm-hmm. started re examining this super thug. You are an intergalactic gangster who just superhero thug. And we started looking more like, okay, what's real life? So Drake came in at a time and he was just fucking wet bread soft. Then he could harmonize. And people related to it, especially young college women. He made music like Kanye, but he was honest like Fifth. Is that the case? Yeah. What's, okay. I think he made music like Kanye, except he could harmonize more than Kanye. But he was vulnerable. He was vulnerable. He definitely, Kanye definitely gave him the window to be vulnerable. And we just learned to accept Kanye West. You know what I'm saying? Like, he just beat out 50 Cent in America. Uh-huh. And then here comes Drake crooning on his records you know what I'm saying and can do it all but what I'm saying is they was pulling the wool over people's eyes because he was really just an actor with a sharp pen there's rumors to be had that there's another actor who played in ATL the, um, not, the movie with um, T.I. T.I. yeah I forget which one it is but he writes for the game yeah yeah pull back that wool Everybody, yeah, you heard it here first. Ah, Samson speaks, nigga. That's right for the game. Mm-hmm. This is what I heard. So okay, sometimes you can have this unbelievable talent where you can write some shit. You can write a song or two. Yeah. But when I found out Drake had ghostwriters, it almost made me feel a sigh of relief. Like, damn, this nigga. I thought this nigga was just Superman. So it's a little bit of hate under there. Not hate, but more so just like, well, damn, I must not be good at what I do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, he's, a, he's an anomaly, though. I, it's, the same thing happened with Jay-Z. Because I, when I was young, I was in middle school, high school, writing rhymes. What are you telling me happened to Jay-Z? I found out Jay-Z, when I was young, my brothers who taught me how to rap was writing the hook, writing the idea for the song, uh-huh. and all the lyrics, right? So when I was writing shit, I thought that's what you had to do to be a writer. So I was listening to Jay-Z come out with album after album. I was like, God damn, like I can't keep I'm sitting here trying to keep up with him. Yeah. I can't keep up with him. He's the best in the who I considered the best. So that's who I wanted to be like. Then I saw um back um what is it called? Blackout. Uh the black album. Black album. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I saw the behind the scenes stuff and Kanye was giving him uh Luther, the sun in the morning, mm-hmm. not gonna chase you out of here. Lucifer. He, Lucifer. Uh-huh. He was giving him the the chorus and the idea for the song. And I was like, what? Somebody could just give you lyrics? And I was like, oh, whew. Does that take away from his talent at all? I'm not saying it took away from his talent because okay. he was just giving him the hook. Okay. But that was the first time I ever knew that rappers got hooks from other people. I never knew that. So do you think he wrote Family Matters? You think Drake wrote Family Matters? No. Really? I absolutely am under the impression that when you hear Drake rap, yeah, it sounds like 316 and Austin just said he'll whoop your ass. It's, it's in, those are his best, what best are those uh, songs. That's what they say. Time I disagree. Stamp Drake. I disagree. That's a thing. Time stamp Drake. I know. I disagree. Uh-huh. It's, it's the same flow. It is the same boring couplets every single time, but whatever. Um, that's my... That's but my uh, when he takes those extra long pauses between his words that's Drake 
Drake can't get Drake is hard for him to get in the pocket, I believe. It's hard for uh. him to like rhyme in the pocket. Think about the songs <laughs> he wrote. Started from the bottom. I'm a zoom zoom for your man. He really Pose. uh na, 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 8 a.m. in Charlotte is the most recent. If you listen to 8 a.m. in Charlotte, he's like talking to you. Stop. Yeah. Talking to you. That's Drake. Stop. That's Drake. Yeah. If he's not harmonizing, that's Drake. And I believe every when I cause when this nigga dropped, so nothing the same came out. I said, Oh, this nigga's incredible. I've been hating on him. I'm wrong about him. Then fucking uh if you're reading this it's too late, I said, Oh, this mm-hmm. nigga got every flow on earth. Yeah. He's got every flow on earth. I may have to stop rapping. This nigga has every flow on earth. He can sing. This nigga makes hits every time he opens his mouth. I'm just I'm never going to be able to keep up and then the nigga came out and we saw Quentin was writing it and I was like oh okay it's like when I thought Jay-Z was the best the curtain comes up so this is what I believe this is what I believe sir Drake had set up Family Matters and he was confident and that's why he was begging Kendrick to drop his shit because he couldn't wait he just knew he just knew that Family Matters is going to impact the world and be incredible and be all over the radio. I think he knocked him down. I think that oh, was yeah. a, it I was think in, it was knocked it down. It was incredible. When I heard it, yeah. I thought it was over. I it's said this knockdown. last podcast. I thought it was over. Yeah. I thought Drake won. It was a knockdown for sure. I didn't, I, I'm different from you. I wasn't a big fan of Kendrick. I like a lot of his singles. I wasn't a big fan of Kendrick. A lot of people are not. I yeah. ain't going to say a lot of people, but more often than not, you will hear somebody say, I, I know how good he is, but his music doesn't I can't speak get, to me. Yeah, it doesn't. I can't get into his music. He sure. does. A, he's a very much an artist who I respect his creativity, but sometimes it doesn't connect with me. That's all. So, but I respect it. Like when I look at Picasso paintings, I'm like, mm-hmm. it's an ear upside down mm-hmm. looking into itself in verse. Mm-hmm. I don't want that on my wall, but I guess everybody says this is hard to paint, so I. Here's your and, handshake yeah. to you, Picasso. Yeah. So I know it's hard to do what Kendrick does. Nobody, I don't know if people seen him live or not, but all those different voices and cadences, yes. he can do all that live. Yes. I know that's difficult to do. So all respect to the brother, but sometimes it don't hit with me. Sometimes he makes his voice too high pitched, and I'm, like, you know what I mean. But so what I'm saying is like Drake is more direct, and he gets to the point. And I thought, damn, that that's probably gonna win the battle. Mm-hmm. Ten minutes later, I felt differently. Then Kendrick had the nerve to drop a radio hit. Matter of fact, I'm going out to the club tonight because I just want to see if they play it. What's crazy is I don't even think it's a radio hit. You don't? I think it's just something to dance to. I don't. Yeah, I don't think that's. I mean, I've been it, playing it, 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 will, it. I've will, been playing it six, seven times a day. You can't call no pedo, nobody a pedophile and it play on the radio. I mean, can you not? I mean, nah. he's he's not celebrating the fact that he's a pedophile. Is he not? He's clowning him for being. He's telling him. He's warning kids not to be around yeah, him. Yeah, this guy's a pedophile. Yeah, yeah. I think that's good for kids. <laughs> Cats out the bag. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's a win. For that's a win for us. That's a yeah. celebration. Yeah, point him out. Yeah, if you see a pedophile, pedophile, point him out. Point him out immediately. Uh huh. So, and I feel like <sighs> body. Body punch Straight to the liver He did to Drake What Drake thought He was gonna do to him And I think Drake That's why he sounded So defeated At the end of his track I heard a lot I heard a lot of people Defend that His his little rant at the end His That, that whole song The hard parts First of all I didn't like I didn't like the title of it mm-hmm. Kendrick already hit you With the 616 in LA So you go and do Heart part 6 Like eh yeah. It's not Nah You're Playing catch up I also don't yeah. just used it For such a weak song like that's because if the don't heart name is that, yeah. what Kendrick's getting busy on, like how you gonna take his the name of what he does and then do a weak song? That's a good point. If it was if it was like a superb rap, that sounded to me like a timestamp Drake. So I don't know. Y'all thought it was weak? No, he he rapped. The okay. con the content is what, yeah. and that's what I'm trying. He okay. tried to get off his knee and he couldn't. <laughs> that, that's the full circle. That's the full circle that I'm trying to say. I think they already had family matters planned and they went through checks and balances and he went to every writer. He said, party, how do you like this one? Checkmate. You know what I'm saying? And they're like, yeah. He had to come up with the heart part six Mm -hmm. pretty quickly because he didn't expect Kendrick to do what he did. Yes. 
And that's why Forced it didn't to the pass. Point. When you listen to it, logically, it just doesn't follow through logically. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. The whole song. I've been through it. I'm not going to go through it again. But it's just too many things, the contradictions and all that. Oh, you didn't have time. This is that time on Funk Master Flex when he told you to freestyle. And you pulled out your phone and couldn't find a rap. Now you got to fight backing up. Yeah. <laughs> Now you got to fight backing up. To most people, there's a lot of professional fighters that can't fight going backwards. I don't know how you get into the game and fight for this many fights and you don't know how to fight going backwards. If you don't know how to, you probably should be ashamed of yourself. Um, but yeah, you got in there and realized, oh, when I'm the aggressor, yeah. it's all good. When you make me back up, now, now I'm tapping out maybe you could put out a song where you're, you're not calling me a pedophile <laughs> <laughs> you know, like uh, this is not fun anymore and then he sounded like the bitch that we always thought he was so i knew it was over when he said yo that shit you just put out was a bop i wish i could dance to it <laughs> yeah he said a lot of a lot of tap out bitch made shit that yo. most people wouldn't say it's because you can't deny that song bro. you can't deny it you all. cannot and i want to say uh, yeah, call, <laughs> yeah. Why you trolling like a bitch? Ain't you tired? Let's talk about that. My God, how do you feel about people saying that? You trying to strike a chord? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, bro. That's the best line in the whole battle. Yeah, how do you feel about people saying he got it from Twitter? Um, I don't care at this point. Ex oof, exactly. I do not care. I don't care. There's six Make billion Make it sound people. good. There's six billion people. Since you wrote it on, on Twitter. Earth. There's six billion people on earth. That's what we call a quick snap. That's something I would freestyle off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. But it was so effective because of how he built it up. Mm -hmm. He actually brings me to my point. Nigga, you don't get a point. You ain't on the podcast, nigga. Because hold the camera. Point. Shut up and hold. Make some motherfucking <laughs> film, nigga. Make some drums, nigga. I think... Now battle rap is just more about the moment than the lyrics. Can nah, we, lyrics matter. But it's all it's all of it. But the mo but if Most you can't but I'm saying like if you can't go above a moment, lyrics ain't gonna bring you back from the moment. That's what I'm saying to you. Nah, cause there, there's something. Cause well, like so what story are you talking, talking like about? You talking on, about on wax? Are you talking about in person? I'm just talking about all together because the thing is like if the moment was so big. You can't go above that moment that just happened. You have to accept defeat. Like story of Adonai, even though he didn't come back and write something, mm -hmm. it wouldn't have mattered. The nigga just revealed that you have a son, my nigga. Like what? Like that's some days of our lives type shit. Like you can't top yeah. that. You you can have like you can have the Dalai Lama come through in every nigga from the, the whoever the lyricists are write you a verse. Don't nobody want to hear that. This nigga just revealed that you have a son. The moment not gonna get no bigger than that. In this one. Kendrick, it, yes, it was going like because to me it was kind of even, but it was just the audacity of this nigga Kendrick to be like step on your record, and then everybody's like trying to review, and then this nigga's like guess what? But like it's like somebody kept on slamming cards on the table. Yeah, and the big joke it He definitely basically. Cut. So the thing is he like it, cut. I pro and the thing is like I feel like if Drake would have written another even well written song, people would have just been like I want to hear that shit, my nigga. Like, but that's what he did drop. He dropped it. Your your the proof is in the pudding. Uh, he dropped a well written song. It didn't logically. It wasn't thought out. It wasn't well thought but out. I'm saying it, well it didn't have no moment to, and that's what I'm saying because it didn't have no moment to. Yeah, it. that's why he everybody lost. was just like, man, get that, get that up out of here. That's why he lost. But what that's I'm trying to say yeah. is, what I'm trying to say is, is that he could have came back. You know, he could have taken some time and in, in return fire, but it's more than just the the moment and all that. It's the setup. He built up to that song. And he's been warning him, I'm going to call you a, a, a pedophile. I'm, a, I'm going to talk about all this stuff. Brilliant angle. And then when he finally comes <laughs> out, he does it that way to a song you can dance to. It was just magnifique. But I'm saying, like, if Drake... Okay, let's say now Kendrick steps on his record, steps on his record hard, right? Comes yes. out with that. Drake does the same thing, and eight minutes after he drops... Eight minutes after Not Like Us... Drake drops that and then there's some new information on the actual song that ain't nobody know about Kendrick. Like he has like it's not going to work but not because of the moment. It's what I'm trying to say is that Kendrick built up to dropping those punchlines mm -hmm. on that beat. Mm -hmm. Drake just came out of nowhere and was just like you beat your girl. 
nobody we're not going to care as much because people are online arguing why don't you care about being a woman beater like you do pedophilia okay okay objectively they're both terrible things i think i'll be a little more offended by a pedophile than i am a, a woman beater am i going to get canceled for that i don't know <laughs> I feel like anything you do to a child, we get both of them up out here. Let's just let's just anything you yeah, do to yeah, a child is yeah. ten times worse than what you do to an adult, right? Okay. Although yeah. it's all reviled, yeah, it's right? all yeah, it's all reviled. So that's one and two. But we're not comp- Nobody's really comparing the negative notions. It's a battle rap. Mm-hmm. If there is, a, if I seen you. Fucking high five a ten year old. I might say this nigga's out here high five and ten year old. <laughs> Two more fives and you can have a ten year oh, wow. grow. Like what? You know? Okay, my bad. Let me come back to my point of the moment real quick because I think this maybe this will drive it home too of what I'm trying to say. This is why I'm saying the moment is becoming more so what's important. My attitude up until like uh, Drake uh, up until. I was kind of getting tired of them dropping records. I was like, nigga, why are you? It's just like rap Not back me. and forth, rap back and forth. Yeah, but that's it happens you, so though. fast. That's you personally. It happens so There's fast. There's a lot of pause. people who was there for every record. I'm just saying exact, but the thing is like, I'm a filthy casual. So the thing is like, the thing that got me back into it though, was when Kendrick got disrespectful and the bomb bomb dropped two and like stepped on his record like that. Because once again, I think if you combine, once you combine the lyricism with the moment, lyricism ain't gonna do it no more you got to have a moment plus lyricism like it don't matter what they say after that thanks i think what you're you're just saying we're saying the same thing two different ways i think like i'm just the reason why that moment (laughs) the reason why that moment was allowed to happen is because kendrick built up to it masterfully and drake didn't and he reiterated it and he reiterated Uh, underrated bar on that not like us he said uh i walked him down i know he got some hoe in him Mm mm-hmm Mm-hmm. He walked him down from the first song. And he said that on the first song, I'm going to walk you down. But here's what I'm trying to say. He, if you follow the, from track to track to that last one, it's a masterful buildup of someone who's used to this lifestyle and culture. The whole, we was talking about this before the podcast started. The reason why this whole thing started is I believe Kendrick is of the culture. He bees it. He's of it. You know what I'm saying? He was battle rapping in 2005. What was Drake doing in 2005? I don't know because I never heard of this nigga until 2011. So he was this acting. I think he was. I think he was on Degrassi in 05. I okay, think. so there you go. Maybe. He was acting. He was wheelchair jimmying it up and shit. You know what I'm saying? This this nigga was still. He was just fresh off his bar mitzvah. He wasn't embracing that side of things. He might have been a fan of rap. Definitely but he wasn't was. actively participating in it. He wasn't in the trenches. You know what I was doing in 2005? Battle rapping. Rap. That's what I've been doing my whole. I've been battle rapping since I was in middle school. I wrote my first rhyme when I was in fi- when I was five years old. I've been a part of this culture for I don't know how long. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And Kendrick is the same way. So when it comes time for the battle, this ain't my first go around. This might be the first time y'all hear, y'all it, hear me, but this sure. ain't my first go around. Drake, yeah. he doesn't understand it. So the reason why he got mad at Kendrick in the first place is because Kendrick went on there and said, "I love you, but I'm trying to murder you niggas." Drake was like, "Why would you say that?" Every yeah, other I, rapper heard that, like, "Oh, you try to murder me, nigga, uh, murder yeah, this I, verse, nigga." I don't understand why he got offended by that either. I tried to put myself in his shoes, mm-hmm. but if you saying you got love for me, you respect me. If you got enough wherewithal to put my name on one of your raps, uh, you respect me in some regard. Basically, people say if he didn't say your name, that means you ain't one of them ones. That's what a lot of people were saying at that time. He said it in an interview. There was a big boy. Y'all can go back to this. There's a big boy interview after that control verse came out. I think he was on promotion for uh, Damn or uh, To Pimp a Butterfly. Big boy asked him about it. He said he respect all those guys that he named. Yeah. That's the reason why he named them. How could go you watch not? that interview. Those yeah. were all the best people at the time. At the time, before there was a big three, yeah, there was all of the mugs he named. I would have just responded. Everybody, everybody who wanted just responded. Some people was, you know, kick. We call this subliminals. They call it. It was so, yeah, sneak yeah. dissing yeah. was bitch made. Subliminals were different. Like sneak dissing is like you kick your little, 
you kick your little distance and try to hide it type shit. Mm-hmm. Act like you never said it. Yeah. When I see you, you know what I'm saying? That's yeah. sneak distance. Subliminals is like, this is for you. And when you hear it, you know what I'm talking about. Exactly. Nigga. That that's what we used to call it subliminals. But a lot of people went at Kendrick with subliminals. What's ironic about that is Drake is really good at that. At subliminals? Yeah. I don't know, cause them white boys on YouTube be finding him out real quick. <laughs> them niggas be running it down. And this song, Drake said he had on a red hat. He was talking about Brendan and shit. Word. <laughs> he's good. He's good. He's well, good at that. Yeah, well, he's they're all a little too good. Cause I'm not that into it. So yeah, yeah. half the time I missed all of that shit. These these are my uh you know, uh you you a little bit older, so yeah. you more so remember the Pac, Nas, yeah. Biggie, Jay Z era. Yeah. I was alive for it, but I wasn't Beanie Siegel. I grew up with Beanie, the yeah, Lux. Jada. Yeah. All them. Yeah, for sure. This is this is I grew up with the Drakes and the Kendricks and the I re- still remember vividly I remember the first time I heard J. Cole. His first his, guy, his, his first mixtape. Uh, I heard him on um, A Star Is Born, Blueprint 3. I think that was the first time I heard him too. And I was like, who the fuck is this? Crazy. At the time, I was trying to fill a void. Wayne had went to jail. That's mm. all I listened to, essentially. You and Drake, because that's when Drake would start messing with Wayne's girl. Y'all both I found to fill out, a void. I didn't, the only reason why I gave Drake a chance is because Wayne signed him. That's how mm. big of a Wayne fan I was. Mm. I was like, of course I'm giving this guy a chance. Wayne's not going to sign anybody. <laughs> you know what? He just happened to be really fucking good. So, yeah. And then I found out Kendrick through college, which was probably the perfect time because um, I was a little more open minded. Mm. You know, when you still you still a kid, you're still a teenager, you still everything's like still kind of new to you. Even if you feel like you've grown when you're 18, so that I was able to soak in Paul's Kendrick's lyrics and his it, the way he raps and. The first time I heard Kendrick, I I heard the jig is up, crazy. I think uh, it was produced by J Cole actually, mm. and this was uh, the road to Good Kid, Mad City. I heard Good Kid, Mad City and hated it. It's like what the fuck? This is not oh, the word? jig is up. I was like, this is not the jig is up. What is this? I love Money Trees. Poetic Justice was the radio hit. You can't not like that song, but uh, I grew with it. I just I was. The open mindedness just to try to understand what he was doing, just found out he was a genius. I ain't gonna harp too much on that. I don't know where we at on time, but yeah. So, uh, needless to say, Kendrick, I knew what he was about from day one. You ever listen to Section 80? I listen mm-hmm. to that religiously. I listen to it. People, you know, don't talk about it enough, I think. Mm. I yeah. listen to it. I, I wasn't that big of a fan of it, but like you said, he was doing stuff differently, mm-hmm. so it took it may take some time, and that's another thing I was trying to argue is that he he built the reason why people were able to get through Euphoria and break down every lyrics is because he's primed his fans to know that absolutely. Although on the surface this may absolutely. sound like I'm saying something simple, but if you look deeper, so he's built that since back in the day, and I wasn't his, but uh, that's my definition of mastery. Good Kid, Mad City is when I first said, okay, he's he's one of them ones. Taking something very complex and making it look very simple. simple. Yeah. And that's, no, that's what he does. That's, that's very much a uh, a skill set. That's that's mastery. That is the skill set. The skill. The name of the skill set is mastery. Yeah. No, he's definitely, he's a, not only that, but if he did that and rap like J. Cole, everybody would call him boring. They would just say I'm bored. If he rapped, they said like, it about him too. If they rap that, but if it, it that would be it, you would just call him bored. If he yeah. rapped like, let's say, uh, fabulous, you would call him bored. But because he's able to do all the different things he does with his vocal pitches and go up and down, speed up, slow down. Not only that, mm-hmm. in the after post production, mm-hmm. I've never heard someone bring in vocals over their vocals, take these vocals out, pan the vocals left or right, <laughs> all this kind of shit. Yeah. So he's creative in almost every aspect of the ridiculous. Yeah. To the point where it's like the the actual rapping is like you know. Then you get to what he's saying. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you listen, you listen to the words dance all across yeah. the speakers, and then you start. Okay, what is he actually saying in this song? Yeah. And you're like, oh shit. So, yeah, Kendrick was. I think Jake. I think Drake. 
is is one of, is nice, but he's overrated. He's great. Yeah, he's but, great. And I think Kendrick is great and underrated. But I think if you add up all their accolades and what they do well, yeah, they kind of even out. But if you put them directly across from each other and uh-huh. they battle rap, I think Drake will win. But if you give them the time to go in the studio, I don't think Drake can stand a chance. Nine times out of ten, Kendrick is winning that. Yeah, because it's just Drake is the type of person who goes for the lowest common denominator. He put out a song called... Uh, the birthday song? I'm a lesbian, girls who like girls. Like the oh, nigga who oh make that wants song. and needs? Girls, that's my, with a little baby. Where I'm on from, it. the girls yeah. like girls. That's one of the dumbest concepts ever. No, nah, the birthday song was ridiculously bad. It was embarrassing. I've heard him rap the alphabet before. Him and Lil Wayne. Not to Lil Wayne did you. it better though. Not to offend you. They were both I'm very not much offended. trash. <laughs> I'm not offended. In my opinion, I think Wayne the first alphabet. He did a second alphabet that was terrible. But the first alphabet was really witty, mm. and that's a good point about Drake and Kendrick. Um, Kendrick is really funny. Drake is really witty. I think a funny guy is going to win that in battle. A, in a battle, yeah. Every time. It, it, Drake hasn't developed his skills over the years, in my opinion. Oh, that's a good point. He's Because he's chasing the trendy thing, he's, he's always evolving. His sound is always evolving. And that makes him be able to make the money. But how is that? How good does that make you with the pen and the pad when it comes in the lab? Do you want to be Mike Jack or do you want to be Prince? Why not both? I don't think nobody on earth has has ever been both. Here's the thing: Mike Jackson couldn't play all the instruments Prince could play, but a lot of those beats Mike Jackson just sat there and said, "Write that down," and then Thriller comes after that. You know what I'm saying? Like, Mm -hmm. so. I don't look as one as better than the other. All I can say is that if I listed all the songs I like from Michael Jackson, they're going to add up more than Prince. However, that doesn't downplay how great Prince is. Right. And I think, like, you can you can f- make hits and you could be the nicest lyrically. But if you ain't writing half them hits, you how you going to become, how you going to be the nicest? He wrote half of them. I give him half. You got to give him half. I, which I don't think you last. <laughs> which half? The I ones I like or the ones I don't like? I don't. I, I think. I think uh, he wrote most of "Take Care." He definitely wrote all of "Thank Me Later." He definitely wrote. Wait, which isn't "Take Care" the one with the the the, the weekend? The one weekend. There? No, that was all the weekend shit. I said he wrote most of it. Oh my bad. He wrote most of How it. How many weekend songs was on "Take Care"? Um, shit. You got "Crew Love." She be loving the crew. Um. She Cameras, good ones go. Underrated song. Was Drake the worst part of Crew Love? He just rapped, bro. He was a little offbeat on the song. He I'm just rapped. You know what was crazy when that came out? I didn't even know how to approach it. I put. I was like, "What the fuck is this?" Actually, but it wasn't. It, like I never said it was bad. It's like, do I nod my head to this or do I sing along <laughs> with it? That 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 sound was so confusing at first, but it was like, it was it was new. It, it was, was new. yeah. It was like new. Kanye West. You could kind of thank him for all the beat switching. And you could thank him for long ass songs. The sped up samples. It, you can also could think you could thank uh, Timberland for the song changing beat, like doing all different sorts of stuff towards the end of the the song. Timberland first introduced that. And like the what like the human sounds and stuff. Oh, Kanye. That's Kanye. That's, right there. I thought that was Timbo. No. Oh no, nah, Timbo did used to. Yeah, he did sample the baby. He, yeah, the baby wasn't he sampling like. Tree whispers and shit. He was, kind of, he was creative. <laughs> I mean, a this. lot of a, okay, a lot of a lot of beat makers with sample shit, but Kanye West, he feels like the human voice is an instrument, so he does yeah. a lot of that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So you feel like Kendrick won? Do you feel like the battle's over? Do you think he's going to drop again? Kendrick won the battle. I think Drake still has a chance to win the war because um, if Kendrick doesn't address that stuff properly. That it's crazy because people are holding on to this for Kendrick because they know nothing about him, and Drake's so out there that the pedophile allegations is a thing, but it's not heavy. it's not heavy because Drake shows so much of himself. Pause. Uh, so I mean that like <laughs> according to Twitter. I mean, yeah. So he showed a lot of himself. 
Yeah, so like uh, Kendrick has to now I'm hearing that there is an older song that addressed some of those allegations about you know about that and uh, saying it's you know not a thing well some two th- it was from an article but, in 2016 but I mean if there was an arrest if there if cops got called there's paperwork going in so yeah I don't think the cops got called you know it's an interesting position Kendrick's in because he's the winner right now but you gotta you either gotta update your fans or you gotta put your publicist to work to bring out those old articles discussing why these things aren't true. You gotta like, do already, something. There's already interviews on the internet of him discussing it. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I mean, history's been documented since since you know YouTube's been alive. But um, we we gotta you gotta point people in the right direction. We don't want to have people out there wondering. Do you know what I'm saying? Same thing with Drake. But Drake isn't like I said. Drake's allegations aren't. Outside of hip hop, he's really loved. That's he's crazy really that loved. Works, huh? So, um, people already is like, yeah, Drake's not a pedophile. Like, get the fuck out of here. You know? I mean, I don't think he he's is. He's not a pedophile. I don't think he is. And that's why. That's why I say Kendrick. Um, but he's he's definitely has some inappropriate um, moments. Yeah, with, uh-huh. with small with younger women. Yeah. You know what I mean? He definitely has seems to have a preference. <laughs> <laughs> so so he has a preference a fetish some would say yeah 